Hello everyone, my name is Trevor Ursulescu and I am the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Today I will review Lindbergh's 1952 Chevrolet Fastback, kit number 72135. This model is a skill level 2 kit, so you will need some paint and glue to put it together. In 1952, Chevrolet advertisements insisted that the Fleetline and Styline models were more beautiful than ever. The truth was that the new cars were just a minor redress of the 1951 models. The only difference was that the cars had a redesigned grille which included wider parking lights and chrome teeth. This was also the last year for the fastback body stop. Because of the Korean War, domestic car production was cut back. There were rumors that chrome would be needed for the war effort, so General Motors had some prototype Chevys and Oldsmobiles built with white painted bumpers instead of the chrome details. Luckily, the War Department never issued such an order. Chevrolet was still known primarily as a family car in 1952 and as a utility car for police and fire departments. The styling was appealing to your typical family man. Mom could even throw the kids in it and get the groceries. Well, that's typical 50s life. Looking at the box, the two called out features of this kit are the detailed chassis and detailed tires. This is rather unusual because there are so many features to the model that Lindbergh could have told us about, like the accurate grille, the full frame suspension, and the finely engraved upholstery and dashboard. The back of the box includes a GM logo, a sidebar with warnings in Japanese, French, German, Spanish, Italian, and Dutch, and a 13-up symbol that you have to be 13 years old to build this kit. This is crazy because I was 8 when I was building these car models back in 1986. Anyway. This is what you see when you open the box. The parts are wrapped in plastic bag, instructions and glass underneath. These are all of the parts of the model. Unfortunately there are no chrome plated pieces. You could paint these with silver paint or use a chrome product like bare metal foil or L-clad. You could even paint these pieces gloss white for a Korean no chrome job. The beautifully illustrated instructions are easy to follow because they show an exploded parts view of the assembly steps with well-written directions and a paint chart in all the previously mentioned languages. There are a few things in this kit that will provide a challenge to model builders. This model was created back in 1960 by Palmer. In those days, many manufacturers did not know how to make a one-piece model car body as the technique was still new. Therefore, what you got in the kit was a multi-piece body that you had to glue together. The advantage was that they could create a detailed interior panel on the inside of the body. Be careful with those odd bumps on the back of the quarter panels. They're the taillights. Don't cut them off! The undercarriage of this model is outstanding. Look at the detailed floor pan. There's an engine pan molded in the right place and a spot for the front suspension. Out back you'll find the fuel tank spare tire well and a spot for the awesome rear axle differential combo. This model looks great from the top and the bottom, but what about the inside? Here's the interior. The bench seats have the right upholstery pattern and just look at that dashboard. Outstanding! Even the plastic wheels look good. The tires are your typical Korean War issue black walls and the wheels feature a dog dish chrome hubcap. Period correct for the era. Despite this model kit's age and the amount of times it has been released by different manufacturers over its history, the car still looks fantastic, with a bit of flash cleanup and care while cutting the parts off the sprue trees with your side cutters, you can build a fantastic model. Although there is a paint chart included in the instructions, you don't have to follow it exactly. A little internet research can help you find the true details of these cars. These old box tops are helpful. Hey, whatever happened to the man and his dog in the box art? Any suggestions? If you collect 132nd scale cars, want a quick fun build, or are looking for something to fill a 50s era diorama, then you don't want to miss buying this model. It can make a good slot car too. I'll be making one in the near future with a video. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please check out my other Lindbergh 132nd scale reviews to see what's in the box on your hobby shop shelves. Happy model building from Monster Hobbies.